Just six talented cooks are left in the competition. Action. They've survived some tough tests to get this far. The lamb's not cooked. It's been in there for nearly half yeah, an hour. Yeah, because you keep opening the oven. Go, 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 go. Someone open the door! Now the battle continues. What could go wrong? <laughs> get up here, please. Your section's going to pop. And one of them will be going home. We've brought in a guest judge to help us. Oh. Oxford University is the world's most iconic academic institution. For 800 years, it has been home to thousands of great minds, including 47 Nobel Prize winners and 26 British Prime Ministers. Here, people are taught to question and criticise. Welcome to New College Oxford. This is one of the oldest and most famous colleges in Oxford University. You today are catering for a formal dinner, a three course formal dinner for 150 students and 15 senior fellows of the college. <laughs> <laughs> Do wonderful food. Do us proud. This is probably the most extreme setting that we've been in. And I'm thinking probably the hardest challenge. You know, 165 people to feed is, is massive. There can't be any mistakes today. Every single plate has to go out virtually identical. They have to look good, they have to taste good, and they have to be on time, because uh, otherwise I'd imagine they'll be held to pay. There's one thing cooking at a very high level, and there's another thing cooking at high volume, and this is the combination of them both, and it doesn't, doesn't get much tougher than that. We've never asked them to do anything like this. They are going to have to really focus, really push themselves. We are talking about fine dining, precision, but in volume. Oh, this is tough. Seriously, seriously tough. Welcome to New College. We're going to pair you off, so what, two of you will just start a two-do main, two-do dessert. It's quite a complicated meal. They're quite intricate dishes, so let's get going. Tim and Annie are on the starter, which is salmon three ways. A salmon confit, a cured salmon with chutney, and a salmon mousse. There's a lot of different techniques used, because it is done three ways, um, and none of the techniques are that easy. First, they have to cure the salmon in salt and slow gin. A little bit of nerve and worry that we're not going to get it all done, because there's so much to do in the time. So, we got our work cut out. They are also starting their confit by slow cooking 15 kilograms of salmon in olive oil, lemon and dill. We've got 20 minutes before these have got to be in. Yeah, yeah, no, that's and fine. They said, um, if we take the Jackie and James's main is loin of rabbit and a mushroom and rabbit risotto with aubergine crisps. To make risotto for this amount of people, they need 140 rabbit legs and 25 kilos of mushrooms. Oh, it's a mushroom fest. To be honest, I can't actually think of what it's like to plate up 165 plates. 165 plates? How many? If that was like 30 seconds. I've got to stop thinking about that. I'll get on with prep for now, and we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Just start on dry frying these, get them trayed up under the lights to dry out. This is the calm before the storm, without a doubt.
Tom and Sarah's pudding is a trio of blackberry parfait, apple sorbet, and a blackberry and apple pie. Tom is making the blackberry parfait, which will need to be mixed and neatly piped out into individual servings. It's like basically, it's give the messy person the messiest possible job to do um, and see how messy he can be. Sarah is taking on the 200 blackberry and apple pies. Trying to lay the pastry on the cases. A huge amount of work. There's millions of them. <laughs> Absolute millions. They have seven hours to prepare the dinner. It might sound like a huge amount of time, but that is physically exhausting. And also you've got to remember about the numbers they have to prepare. Oi, oi, oi. Those seven hours will fly by. Two hours are gone, and Annie and Tim's comfy salmon is cooked. They now have to flake it into 165 rings. I love being up to my elbows in salmon. What a great way to spend the day. Do you know how long the whole thing's going to take you, seriously? Or have you just got your head down and hoping for the best? Um, we have got a timing plan with deadlines um, for us to meet at each stage and so far we are meeting those deadlines but getting this done in time is going to be a real push. We are on track. We're what could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Jackie and James also need to think strategically. They will have to strip all the meat off the rabbit legs as well as make the risotto base. How many legs are we actually doing? 140 of them. There's 140 rabbits. Yeah. Then we've got a shred. Yeah. If we said one and a half minutes per leg, that's two and a half hours. We can't take one and a half minutes. We have to do it in... A minute. 140 minutes, that will be. That's going to be two hours and 20 minutes still. Mm -hmm. Well, we can't do the legs until they're done. I'm just saying. Well, I'm sort of getting, like, I kind of knew where I was, and now I don't have a well, clue. Just, it's fine. No, we're cool. We're doing absolutely fine. Don't worry about it. Oh, we've got so much work to do. Um, right. <sighs> Sarah is halfway through her pies. It's a bit of a repetitive thing. You need to kind of get in, into a zone. It's not chop, chop, chuck in the pan. It's neat, very neat. Where's Tom? Tom's in the freezer. He's in the freezer, literally. Tom? Are you stuck in there? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. How long are you going to stay in the freezer? Because it's it's a freezer. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm OK. I just need to get these done, and then I'm going to be... Uh... Don't be a hero. Look, don't be a hero and then end up messing it up. Are you really all right? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I just need to finish this tray, and then I'm ready to go. Mmm. All right. I feel really bad locking you back in the freezer. Nah, okay. Just do me a favour. Just don't actually shut it, because the blaster comes on. Just pull it to... Thank you. It's late afternoon. And the students are finishing up their tutorials. It's as if he's saying the clichés are blinding him to the emotional truth of the situation. So we could do the same as Rodolphe and miss the point. We could. These sharp, critical skills will soon be used to size up the contestants' food. Fine dining has been at the heart of Oxford for over 700 years. At New College, Formal Hall, a three-course dinner with table service, is served six days a week. 
we want our guests to be impressed. Um, we don't just want to feed them, we want to, um, for them to have a really uh, good dining experience. When you come in, you certainly expect good food because it's very embarrassing if you bring a guest in and there's a disaster. There are all sorts of kind of hilarious events you can remember, like the creme brulee that didn't crack and the peas like bullets. So I think if the meal's a disaster, there'll be kind of some verbal recognition of that. Um, it'll go down in history. <laughs> We've never been late, not since I've been here, and certainly probably not in the 700 years that this place has been in operation. So there's a huge tradition there to make sure that this continues. Back in the kitchen, the rabbit legs for the risotto are cooked. How many legs you got? 140. 140, you got to strip all the meat off them, yeah? Yeah. I'm slightly worried about the timings on that, actually. It takes her chef 20 minutes. I'm thinking it's going to take us quite a lot longer. How does one guy do this in 20 minutes? I, I, I cannot see how someone can do this in that time. They're having a bubble, aren't they? What's that, then? They're having a laugh, taking a mickey. It won't be funny if the food's late, though, will it? I can't see Greg and John laughing. I know. How long have you been doing this for? Ten minutes, I think. Ten minutes? You're about a quarter of the way through. Yeah. So that makes 40 minutes at least. Another well, half an hour. To, then we need to speed up. You oh. need to really speed up. You've got risotto to do, you've got shard to do, you've got to finish off your loins, finish these off. You've got to go through those trays, make sure there's no gristle, no bone. Well, I know I need to get it. Don't get fast. panicky, just get faster. The reality is starting to hit home for our six right now because it's an hour and a half before the food has to be upstairs in the serving kitchen and then really two hours before the food hits the table. We are approaching the end of the salmon mousse roll rolling. With prep almost over, Tim and Annie now face the daunting task of making each plate look like it has come out of a top restaurant. Guys, do one plate finish so you know in your mind what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. Then turn it into a conveyor belt style production. Right. Okay. 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 We can get that dressing out. You've got three now. plates a minute to do. Yes. Plating up will take them almost an hour. The salmon mousse roll goes on top of watercress and chive mayonnaise and is garnished with four pink peppercorns. The Oxford chutney will be topped just before service with cured salmon in pastry, and the confit is topped with pea shoots and a dill and caper dressing. You've got 165 of those to do again. Right, we better get on with it. My concern is that they understand that as the time goes on, that they realise how long it's going to take them to plate 165 plates of anything because it's not a two-minute job. But with 30 dishes plated, Annie and Tim make a discovery. It, there was a tiny shard of glass in the peppercorns. Is any peppercorns already? Yes. All of these have got peppercorns on them. I've been using my fingers, so I think I would have noticed. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use them. Start again. Start again. I'll get these plates washed. Can we just pick off the peppercorns? Not if it's been near there, no. I can't risk it. Some of the chutney has to be thrown away, so they will have to make sure there's enough to go around. Guys, you've got about 30 minutes before you should have finished this job. If you need help, you need to call because you're the first one that kicks off. And if you're late, everyone else will be late, OK? Right, 30 minutes, 160 plates to do. We can do it. I love your confidence. Dinner hasn't been late for 700 years, and that's not going to change tonight.
There's an hour until the main, but Jackie and James have yet to start their risotto. Need a bit of Chaz and Dave going on, don't we? <laughs> rabbit, 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 rabbit. <laughs> and Sarah are plating their parfaits ready for service. It's now five to six. Can you get these done by quarter past six? No, I don't think we can. We're not even three quarters way around this one yet and we've got to fill up a whole nother one, so no, I don't think we can. Okay, 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 okay. You're doing all right, you're ahead of time. Well, it's we your wife, if you wanted help. Yes. We may want to pull one of you off. OK. Pair of willing hands. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Sarah. Can you just pipe that much mayonnaise on a plate and then put some watercress on yes. it? With Sarah helping, Tim can now sear the 165 portions of pastry-coated cured salmon to finish the dish. Just leave them a minute. OK. You've got to be quick but patient. So that's the last of them? Yes, it is. And that's the last of the chutney? Yes, that's the last of that. I think we're going to be very tight on the chutney. Everything's fine. We're not going to ruin tradition tonight. The starters are now on the trolley waiting to go up, but the hot salmon that Tim's doing has got to be plated plate by plate once they get up there. So there is still a ton of work to do. It's seven o'clock. All the food is now rushed upstairs to the service kitchen next to the dining hall. they sit down, you rehearse silence because they'll say grace. Then we hit it running, OK? The college fellows and tutors arrive. As soon as they are all seated at the high table, service must begin. These academics are world experts in a diverse range of subjects including the staging of opera during the 17th to 19th century, Russian culture of the late imperial and Soviet periods, and the study of mitochondria in plants. Benedictus Benedicat. Tim and Annie now have to get 165 perfect starters out in just 15 minutes. Come on, guys, doing well. Guys, move it now for me, please. Sorry. Dressing missing on that one, that first one. So what about the chutney, guys? Uh, right yeah, unfortunately, we're having to send some out without chutney. OK, last, last plate. Whew. Nice. We, we did, did it. it. 165 plates. 15 minutes. And they all look pretty good. <laughs> I think they do. 
apart from the ones with nature on me. <laughs> Tim and Annie have served salmon confit with a dill and olive oil dressing, cured salmon in a thin pastry with chutney, and a salmon mousse served on mixed leaves with pink peppercorns. Really nice. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker for salmon anyway, but I thought it was a really nice dish. The salmon roll is really good, and the chutney around the one in the middle was great. Yeah. I thought the trio of salmon was delicious. The um, comfy salmon was really complimented by the capers, and it was presented really nicely. It was really elegant, and it was delicious. My favourite one was probably the loin parcel, but um, I think it was ruined slightly by the fact that it didn't come with any chutney, which was a bit sad, but um, it was quite nice, it was quite tasty, so. After helping serve the starters, James and Jackie only have minutes until their service. Man, I'm gonna be able to row for this college after this, you know? <laughs> There is also help on standby for them. There's a thing of too many cooks, and it's kind of if everybody's going at it and nobody knows exactly, you know, me and James have been studying this recipe all afternoon. Thanks very much. Well, what's it going to do anything? Just asking how much there was. That was right. all. Jackie's just in a flat running around like a headless chicken, and James has just stayed over those pots, stirring like a thing possessed. I don't know if they even know where they are right now. These guys haven't been briefed on the dish, and I'm not prepared to leave them to do it on their own. Well, I, I mean, I was, I was thinking of actually leaving you back with your own dish and letting the guys go back to their desserts. Yeah, no, I'd be happy to do that. Then. Right, go, go, back on your desserts. Go, 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 go. I know they're calling me bossy boots, but it is, you know, there's a reason that a head chef's in charge, and there's a reason that one person would normally manage that, and I know they're just trying to help, but in terms of like managing the flavour, we've got to make sure that we get it right. Go that way, go that way. Let's go. Nothing has been plated up in advance, so James and Jackie have to start from scratch. Nice and neat, guys. I will, all the same, I will reject them if they're not, OK? Yes, yeah. Top table in. Let's go, guys. The rabbit leg and mushroom risotto has to go onto the plate first. It's then topped with chard, rabbit loin, and the aubergine crisps. Stay. Finally, the cider sauce is added. Oh, nearly, nearly, nearly. Need it the other way around. That's right. That's right. Just keep going. Jack, you've done 10 so far. You've got 150 to go. I can't put things on the plate if I can't I see can't it, Chef. Balls, please, Chef. Right, James. Sorry, it's just, I see white and I stick risotto on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, you're gonna have to speed it up. This is slow, slow, slow. Come on. Right, so, like, guys, your friends are in trouble, and Chef would like you to give him a hand. Okay, but like now, though. Yes, thank you. Right, Sarah. Can you get to the right hand side of James? Just get, get a spoon plating up, the same plating size up. that he's got. Risotto, yeah. chard, loin, chips. Watch my portion God, size. Look at mine. Right, okay. Keep on going, guys. You're doing real well. Okay, go. There's a light Dirty. at the end of the tunnel. Come on, final push. We've hit it. Right, load your trolleys. You've got no time to miss. Get your trolleys down as quick as. I think it's very difficult to do rabbit. 
without it being dry, and I think this actually is, has succeeded rather well. I thought it was marvellous. I mean, the cider was a bit more passive than I would have liked, but it was very good, very good. I don't usually eat rabbit, but um, this, was, this is really delicious, actually. It's really good. I'm enjoying it. Uh, the presentation could have been a bit better, but I thought the vegetable crisps on the top were a nice touch. The rabbit, however, was uh, very dry, uh, overcooked, I think, and also the greens have been quite violated on my plate, I think. <laughs> okay, you go from the back, I'll take it from the front. Okay. So it's all hands on deck for the final course. Yeah. Now they have to get their plates, hot pies and cold sorbet upstairs. You all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa! God, you can come to work with me. <laughs> the parfait and coulis have been plated in advance, but the rest has to be added at the pass. That looks good. I'm loving this. Where's your mint leaf? This is what I got given. OK, there's no mint leaf, there's no mint leaves on these. Get up here, please, and swap over with Tim. Your section's going to pop. It's your section, you run the section. Got a shower, do you want me to do this? Oh, oh nice everyone's doing too many things at once. One person does one thing. Oh. Pass me the tray of twirls. One thing at a time. Okay. Good leg. That's it. Come on, guys, out the back. Let's move. Okay. A little bit more wide. Fast push. Come on, let's go. Come on. Tim, five more to come. Yeah. No problem. Done, darling. That was really good. Yes, my Well done, mate. Tom and Sarah have made an autumn plate: blackberry and apple pie on creme anglaise, apple sorbet on a brandy snap, and blackberry parfait on a berry coulis. I'm, I'm enjoying that a lot. I think it's 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 a nice seasonal theme here. Very nice, very nice. The blackberry coffee tastes of nothing. I, I disagree, Carol. I think you're being a little bit harsh. <laughs> yes. There's a little sort of crust underneath the um, sorbet. I'm sure it's insignificant, but I'm sort of a cheap date, so um, that made me happy. Rusty awesomeness on the outside, and then this sort of moist berry explosion on the inside. It's just people from down under. We don't we don't experience this level of tidy goodness. It's so good, so good. Absolutely fantastic. Well done to the guys. Well done. Benedicto Benedicato. Okay, guys, thank you very much indeed. We've done it. We've done 165. Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. And we can do it all again tomorrow night. Yeah, anytime. Good luck. I think it went very well today. Very well. Very pleased. Obviously, a little speed needed for service, but we've delivered 165 plates all looking the same. It'd be quite nice to have them as a team. That was a seriously long day. For our six, they must be completely exhausted. A huge challenge we put in front of them, and they have done it. Nearly 500 plates of food they did tonight. I mean, that is quite incredible. 
it's a form of masochism now. I kind of the, the harder and harder it gets, and the more they push you, the more I seem to enjoy it. It's hard work, but it's very fulfilling. Even though it was unbelievably hard work, we were always either on track or very nearly on track, and I loved it. My back is on fire, my feet are killing me, and my head is pounding, but I've got a massive smile on my face, so yeah, fantastic. We've got six extraordinary cooks who can cope with everything we throw at them, and we are going to have to knock one of these out. The last few tests have been about pushing yourself, about finding real finesse. We're going to ask you to push that one stage further. And to do that, we are going back to the invention test. We have for you an extraordinary set of ingredients. And from those ingredients, we want you to cook two dishes. One savoury, one sweet. At the end of today's test, one of you will be leaving us. OK, come up and collect your ingredients. I'm a bit muddled at the moment. I think I need to settle down and just have a little think rather than blindly picking up ingredients. <laughs> I've got what I need to make two good dishes here. Just gotta make it look nice, taste good. Well, it's the pudding, really, <laughs> that um, upset me. I don't know what to do. OK, guys, we're gonna stop you now. Two dishes, one sweet, one savoury, absolutely beautiful. One and a half hours, let's cook. Six-year-old Tim has been labelled the mad professor. Liquid nitrogen and space dust. We could probably get into orbit here, couldn't we? Hopefully, yeah, that's the idea. But his food has touches of genius. I think the sorbet is sublime. It develops on the palate. It's not just one hit of flavour. Tim? What are your two dishes today? I'm going to do a vanilla lobster pearl barley risotto for my savory course, and a lovely goat cheesecake with stewed figs and almond brittle. Goat cheese in your pudding and vanilla in your main. So your main is almost a sweet and your sweet's almost a savory. Almost, although there will be uh, vanilla running through both courses to sort of tie it all together. What significance is the competition now taking on for you? All other aspects of my life have taken a back seat. It's been uh, damaging to work and my social life. Uh, in my home life. Do you know what we call that in the industry? Uh, being a chef? Absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. You've had 15 minutes. Intensive care sister Sara has shown real flair with her own Italian style. That Sara is a thing of beauty. Absolutely bang on. But some dishes have missed the mark. Some of your squid is overcooked, some of your squid is not cooked enough. Technically, I think it's not quite right. 
Sarah, what are your dishes today? I'm making a lobster medallions and clam stack. My dessert will be a tartlet with frangipane, pistachio and uh, calvados and figs. What does food mean to an Italian lady? Gosh, <laughs> it's... No, I can't say it on television. <laughs> so it'll be like... <laughs> it means um, it's better than sex. <laughs> right. Yeah? That better be one hell of a lobster. Oh, God. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> You've had half an hour, you've got one hour left. Vegetarian Jackie has struggled to keep her cool in the kitchen. There's absolutely no way I'm getting this food ready in half an hour. God damn! Come on, get hot. But her love of Asian street food has inspired some standout dishes. The joy to see you present food like that, Jackie. Get in there, Jackie. I mean, that is, that's nice. Jackie, what are your two dishes today? I'm making um, an aubergine parmigiano with a um, walnut pesto and a chocolate mousse in a hazelnut pastry case with something to do with mint and gold leaf. I don't know, I've only ever stuck it on a Buddha. I've never actually tried to eat it before. Annie's talent has revealed itself in some exceptional modern British creations. I think it's really elegant. I think it looks really sophisticated. But there have been some mistakes. It's just very, very processed, so you don't even get chunks of corn in terms of texture. The mushroom was burned. If I give that to my customers, they shoot me. No more mistake, Annie. Sorry, chef. It's a bit sloppy, isn't it? A bit. Ooh. Annie, what are your two dishes today? Um, I'm cooking this beautiful piece of lamb with a fondant potato and a Jerusalem artichoke puree. I'm then cooking a caramel parfait, which is in the freezer, so fingers crossed. Do these two dishes demonstrate enough that you deserve to stay in this competition? Absolutely. I think there's an art to cooking simple food beautifully. Uh, there's nothing to hide behind. You have to do it absolutely perfectly. One hour gone. Tom's cooking often shows the flair of a professional. As far as I'm concerned, it is the work of a, of a craftsman. That is great cooking. Tom, today, I think, fed most of the crew and the cast. Good job. But he has some chaotic working methods. There's something exploded in here. The mess! Yeah. Tom, as always, a huge array of ingredients scattered across your bench. Yeah. It looks completely disorganised, but your two dishes today are? I am doing fillet of lamb with lamb sweetbreads, a white onion puree and some roasted baby vegetables. And dessert is, um, it's like a chocolate and pistachio mousse. Tom, nobody's safe today. Mm-hmm. Good luck. Four year old carpenter James has had some standout dishes. I think the star of the show for me is the cake. It's rich, it's light, it's fluffy. But he doesn't always get it spot on. I made a fatal error, my rice overdid. I'm just a bit gutted. James, what are, you, what are your two dishes today? I'm doing a, um, a slight twist on a classic mussel marinara in the fact that I'm using clams. Um, I'm serving that with a, a lobster tail, done with a little bit of chilli, a little bit of garlic. For pudding, I'm doing a cherry and amaretto frangipan tart with chantilly cream and butterscotch sauce. 
I love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is basically food from my heart, just done a massively amount better. All right. Last 10 minutes, please. Last 10. Get it on the plates. Two minutes. That's it. Time's up. Stop. Step away. Stop. We are going to taste your food now, but we've brought in a guest judge to help us. Oh, oh no, it's don't, please don't let it be Michelle Roux. Michelle Roux, Jr. Oh. I appreciate you're all amateurs, but my standards are very high. But one thing I pride myself in is finding potential. James, bring your food up, please. James's main dish is a clam marinière with chili lobster. His pudding is a cherry and frangipan tart with butterscotch sauce and chantilly cream. A bit too sharp on the wine. I do like a drop of wine. <laughs> I'd rather drink a glass of yeah, wine yeah. than find it in there. But the ingredients in there are well cooked, they're well seasoned, and it's a very inviting bowl of food. When the lobster and the chilli and the little clams finally come through, it's a delight. That's like a cuddle from Neptune, that is. That is a nice big kiss of the sea. Uh, let's try your dessert. I, I like the way you've executed it. I like the, the pastry around the outside. Your frangipan's a bit dense. That's, that's a sort of a bit of a mistake. But, James, it's good. Thank you. Are you, are you committed to this competition, James? I'm extremely committed to this competition. <laughs> that's serious commitment, because that's a lot of pain to go through. Yes. Jackie's first course is a parmesan and aubergine stack with walnut pesto followed by a chocolate mousse in hazelnut pastry with a white chocolate sauce. The richness of your pesto is great. Lots and lots of garlic and the flavour of walnuts coming through the background. The sweet tomatoes, the sort of spiciness coming from your peppers. But the aubergines, I think, just need to be a lot softer. Okay. Let's move to your dessert. Jackie, I like the presentation and wrapping a mint leaf in edible gold, I think, is a great touch. However, that's where it stops. The execution, there is a problem. You see that pastry, that thick? It's just too thick. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not right. Yeah. Lovely smooth chocolate, 
and then you get toasty nut flavour at the end. I like it. Thanks. The first thing I wanted to say when I went off is I don't do desserts, I don't make desserts, I don't know how to cut pastry. Oh my God, the guy's like the king of pastry, you know? It's like, oh! Tim has made a pearl barley risotto with lobster, vanilla and samphire. His pudding is a goat's cheese and vanilla cheesecake with almond brittle and figs. You put it in your mouth and you immediately get a huge burst of vanilla. Maybe tone it down just a tiny sure, bit. Sure, yeah. But I'll give you one thing, Tim. It's brave and it works. There was a huge amount of vanilla in that very, very nutty pearl barley. And then the power of the lobster takes over from the vanilla, so you get that lovely richness. I actually quite like it. Thank you. Uh, the Mad Professor, yeah, you've done it again, mate. I, I really like it. Thank you. I really like it. Let's move on to your sweet. OK. Uh, your cake has obviously started to break down. I hope it still tastes good. Well, it's going to have to taste good looking like that. Yeah. I actually like your goat's cheese mousse there. I think it's really delicious. Well done. Um, it's a shame it's collapsed, but great idea. The cheesecake fell apart, and I kind of tried to reform it into a kind of dome, but it didn't really work. But it tasted good. Sarah's first course is a lobster stack with herbs, potatoes, clams and lobster bisque. Her dessert is a frangipan fig and pistachio tart with a calvados sabayon. I think it looks great. I honestly do. It's very well seasoned. The lobster beautifully cooked. It's tender. Everything in there for me works. I'd happily eat it. Mm. Thank you. I love it. I really do. I like the idea of that very, very salty, sharp, sweet lobster, the richness of the clams and the cream. Really good. Thank you. <laughs> Your dessert. Sweet pistachio and sticky sweet fig. They are predominant flavours, but as a dessert, it, it's too dry. I'd eat it with a pot of tea. Tom's main is lamb fillet with sweetbreads, onion puree and glazed vegetables. His pudding is a chocolate, honeycomb and pistachio mousse with vanilla cream. There are some issues with this. Uh, the sweetbreads are too chewy. Okay. They should be soft and there is some burnt around the outside of them. And there's also a bit of burnt pepper on the edge of your lamb. But I love the sweetness of the lamb with the almost sweetness of that onion sauce you've done, I think that's great. The lamb is pink, how I like it. The sweet bread I'm not even going to taste because it looks like a lump of coal. If it's not right, don't put it on the plate. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Should we move on to the dessert? Yeah. Chocolate pistachio nuts, vanilla cream, um, honeycomb. The flavours are great, but it's just far, far too dense. That 
wasn't that wasn't great. Annie has cooked lamb fillet with Jerusalem artichoke puree, glazed vegetables, and fondant potato. Her dessert is a caramel parfait and chocolate ganache. Annie, uh, for me, the lamb's overcooked. Uh, the sauce, you can see it's wishy-washy. The Jerusalem artichoke puree, I think, goes well with the lamb, but it is overpowering. Let's move to your dessert. I'm sad that the parfait hasn't held up. It, it, it was always going to be very, very risky. Flavour-wise, great. But textures, we've got an issue. Because we've got a milkshake on one side and a very, very firm ganache on the other. Texture-wise, it, it's wrong. I'm very disappointed that today, when it matters so much, I just didn't come up to scratch. Thank you. Off you go. Freezer, the door's open. Oh, and my I parfait just, is stopped. Oh my goodness. Oh. It was that last half hour. Bottom of the glass today. I've been impressed. I mean, some of the food here, I could see a lot of potential. Good luck with the judging. Oh, thanks. Not easy. As you well know. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you now who I think came out of this as absolute heroes. Tim, today, was absolutely brilliant. Inventive, that's one thing. Inventive and delicious, that's something very special. The idea of lobster, pearl barley and vanilla and that thread running right through into the dessert again with the vanilla, the goat's cheese, for me, Tim, absolutely. Sarah. Sarah today managed to take the food of Italy that's in her heart and she made it posh. It just had real care and attention, and she was confident about it, which was great. And the other one is James. The way he cooked the lobster in its little parcel with the chilli. Dessert was good, really good. So there's my three. Totally agree. Do you know what's interesting, isn't it? Jackie sits there somewhere in the middle, didn't make too many mistakes, didn't really, really wow, but actually cooked really tasty food. I'm, I'm scared of the, of the way this is going because two absolutely fantastic cooks, Annie and Tom, have just fallen flat on their face today. Actually, Annie really, really tripped up. That lamb dish, overpowered with Jerusalem artichokes, uh, sauce really thin, overcooked lamb. Her dessert, she was trying to get ice cream to freeze in an hour and 20 minutes. It was never, ever, ever going to happen. I'm hugely disappointed with myself. I mean, there's nobody else I can blame. You know, I made all the decisions and I was the one out there cooking. So it's all down to me. Um, but, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. Tom, what, what happened to Tom today? He had lamb with burnt pepper on the outside. He had burnt sweetbreads. And the dessert, big chunk of chocolate. That's what it was, big chunk of chocolate. Going home now will be Devastating, you know, it'll be, it'll be a real kick in the teeth for me because you don't want to go out like that. You know, that's not what my food is about, so... Decision time, Tom or Annie? I'll tell you what, I would never have believed that I'd be here this afternoon having this conversation. I would never have believed in a million years. The 
there were some great dishes today, and those dishes were cooked by Tim. Take a step over there, Tim. Oh, my. You're safe. James. Jackie, today uh, there were mistakes in your food. Things weren't right. But there also was a lot of good. Jackie, you're safe. <laughs> that leaves us now with you two, Tom and Annie. person leaving us it's Annie I'm sorry thank you so much thank you very much it's been amazing Pleasure. take care <laughs> of things that I've done in my life. I can't think of anything else really where I've achieved quite so much in a short space of time. It's been amazing, really amazing experience and I don't regret it at all. But I really regret those plates of food that I put out today and I'm very, very sad that it's over. Did it? I um, dodged a rather large bullet today, to be honest. I need to come back from this and really, really turn it on because I can't afford to do things like that. Oh, top five. That's not bad. <laughs> Next time comes the most feared challenge of all. Restaurant critics, they look like undertakers. If I make a mistake now, it's curtains. As they all fight for a coveted place in the final four. Go, 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 go. Ugh. Ah! Don't eat that. Don't experiment on restaurant critics. This is the stuff MasterChef champions are made of. 